Hello, Zero K fans, and welcome to Nanalay the Dawn. I'm your host, Shadow Fury 333 with some exhibition match to Zero K, which I haven't really done in a while. But I figure, you know, it's been a tournament, a couple tournaments now that I've just been doing the tournaments, and I thought, let's go back to doing some exhibition matches. So we're going to start out with Wesley Boss versus Fieldos on Hide and Seek. Wesley Boss, for those of you who didn't watch the tournament, is actually really good. They got third place. Or at least I have to double check the exact results, but it, if I recall correctly, they got third place, and that was a difficult tournament, so yeah, good on them. Need to I feel the need to double check that because I'm I was thinking that and then I then it just occurred to me as I said that, wait a sec. Maybe I shouldn't be absolutely sure that's true. And it is indeed true. Wesley Boss got third place. Fieldos won the tournament. So this is taking place a little afterwards. This this replay was done in the last couple days, so the week following the tournament. I'm curious to see how these players have developed because of that. So let's go! Wesley going for the Cloakybot Factory and as Fieldos as well, which naturally makes sense. Everyone's going for Cloaky these days because, I mean, Cloaky's strong. It's a good factory. There's absolutely nothing wrong with the Cloakybot Factory. It's just that it's one of those factories that has become a little bit overplayed in the sense that everyone plays it. It's a good safe factory. Got a lot of good opening options. Glaives are very strong. Everything else is good. Glaives are really good. And even with some of the nerfs that came in, the Ronin got nerfed a little bit. It slowed, I think it got slowed down or projectile speed got increased. And that was about it. There was a bunch of other balance changes recently. But yeah, Cloakybot is still powerful. And of course, balance changes being what they are, they it takes a while for that to really filter through. And Glaze being what they are, I'm not sure how much that matters. I do expect we might see some facts, which is later on, but at this point, yeah, just everyone's on Glaze. Wesley setting up for defense on their Glaze, setting up for defense on the 2.4 mechs. While, on the other hand, Fieldtoss relying much more on static defense, which I kind of agree with, since the 2.4 mechs is really that important, and even then, Fieldtoss started with that. And we see that's that's an interesting choice. Fieldtoss does have a slight economic disadvantage as a result, but not by much. And clearly the idea was to get this, fa get this mechs but that might not be an option. No, indeed, that Lotus doing a fine job defending, stopping Field from getting any damage in there, and that is going to be a safe expansion attempt for Wes. And I do like this as well. This is something I noticed Wesley Boss doing during the tournament was Circle Guard. We don't see a lot of Circle Guard used, or at least haven't seen a lot of Circle Guard used. Wes is one of the first players I've seen use it regularly, which I think is pretty cool, because it's one of those features that's not really well known, because it's kind of hard to know how to do it. Like, basically... You have to click the guard button and then draw a circle around the thing you want to guard. And there you go, circle guard. But we don't see a lot of people use it, and I'm glad to see that it has found some use. And it's been quite handy. It actually really helped them quite a bit during one of the matches. Like They were doing shields and having bandits protect their convicts, and it worked fairly well for just general expansion. At this point, we're all, of course, seeing Glaives protecting the... The Conjurer, which is a little bit harder to do because of the way that Glaives work. They're very micro-intensive, but as it stands, it should be fine. And Fieldtoss finding a very difficult time actually getting in in the first place. While on the other hand, Fieldtoss does have a Glaive defending one of their Conjurers, but that is going to be a bit of a problem. Since three Glaives coming in there is likely to win unless the micro from Fieldtoss is absolutely godlike. But it looks like Fieldtoss is going to be finding not much yet. Actually, are they aware of this? No, they're not yet until the actual approach. And it's coming in right now. There it is. That's the well, first attack coming in. And that is going to be Fieldtoss losing this expansion, the 2.7 expansion, which will include the Conjurer. And that's the even bigger news. The Conjurer could have rebuilt that, but now it's gone. And there's no easy way to leapfrog from the expansion over to the bottom le left corner. While at the same time, Wesley Boss is doing exactly that, taking the top right corner and overall just expanding way faster than Fieldtoss. At this point, though, Fieldtoss clearly just has been planning around a more def more aggressive strategy. They want to raid. They want to get rid of these expansions. They want to make sure that Wesley Boss is punished for building this stuff, and they should be able to do so, at least for two or three of them. Wes has not been naked expanding, which is good in this case, as Fieldtoss is being quite aggressive. But with six glaives, they will be able to get through a couple of these before they have too few glaives to deal with the Lotuses. That's assuming Wesley attacks... Oh, sorry, Fieldtoss attacks now, though. That's assuming Wesley doesn't move these Glaives up to defend, and the thing is Wesley is building them. So, sooner or later, they will be in place. And at the same time, Wesley Boss coming around the back 
with their own glaives, which will have a bit of a harder time. Fieldhouse already in place to defend them, well aware of their approach, and that is not going to go especially well. It's... Clearly, Mileage actually has still been found by Wesley Boss, and just barely enough to be able to get rid of the 2.4. Just barely, but even then, it might even be too late for the way the targeting was working, and indeed, Wesley is still able to get rid of that small expansion. Still able to secure their economic advantage, but it's... That was, that was at a fairly big cost. Well, on the other hand, though, Field Thoughts should be able to get in here and do much more damage. I mean, they have to kill two or three metal extractors in order to get the amount of value that Wes got, but only losing one glaive. Retreating, healing up, good call there. Taking advantage of the glaives, regenerating health. And that will allow them to just go from metal extractor to metal extractor. At this point, they could actually use these glaives to take everything if they carefully micro them back every time. At the same time, though, Field Thoughts... Making sure that Wesley Boss cannot do the same. And I approve of that. Also, ooh, that positioning. Field Toss is positioning there. In theory, that could have gotten rid of all the glaze from Wesley Boss. Wesley doing some nice retreat micro there to make sure that they don't lose everything for free. But they do lose everything. However, now Field Toss is in a position where they can't easily take on these expansions. So, good job, Wesley Boss. Only lost one expansion and a smaller one on that. And maintaining a 10 metal per second lead. So, Wes right now is doing a great job keeping themselves in a strong position. Of course, a lot of that is because of this Northeast expansion, which Fieldhouse is answering with the Southwest expansion, and answering that quite well defensively, but even then, just look at the amount of metal that has been produced. Like, Wes is ahead by 1,000 metal or so, and also ahead in attrition by 400. So right now, Wes, they've got about 1,500 metal ahead for unit value. They're doing just fine. I mean, it's glaives, so it could turn on a dime. But still, they are doing just fine. And at this point, Fieldhouse managing to get a little bit of a bit of a harassment attack in there. Getting rid of a 2.4, possibly getting rid of the Lotus, but not likely, thanks to the commander there, and that is going to leave Wes with one fewer expansion, and quite frankly, Fieldhouse is catching up. I'm a little surprised Wes the Boss has not set up a more more robust rebuilding structure. They, I mean, that's three metal on, or three and a half metal on the table right there, almost four. And the commander's right there. In fact, the only worker they have here is up at the base building metal extractors. Everything else they have is either in the back. Oh, no, I'm sorry. There's in the back. Building some solar plants, not with metal extractors. But at this point, Wes's power situation is fine. They don't need more power. They can easily reclaim up to 40 metal and still be fine. And they're not getting that much. Not with the glaive army on both sides. So at this point, I would like to see Phil. I would like to see Wesley Boss set up a conjurer up front, get these metal extractors back, and also take the reclaim because there's not a non trivial amount of reclaim. I mean, it's. Sorry, not a trivial amount of reclaim. There's 600 metal in reclaim, which the commander is taking. But like I said, West right now, they have enough metal, sorry, they have enough energy for the metal. They don't have enough build power for the metal, mind you, but they do have enough energy. So as long as they get that build power, like get a couple more caretakers at their main base, they could easily burn all this metal and really take advantage of that. And they are doing exactly that. Good. I'm glad to see that. And there's the rebuild. So they are managing to do it with the commander. It's a little slower than could have been. Still, though, at the same time, the Southwest getting rid of the 2.7 Metal Extractor on the hill and going into the base, which should actually find quite a bit. Field Toss coming in one at a time. Wesley Boss is already here, and as we all know, 0k, if you're walking backwards, you win. So, Wes right now has a chance of getting rid of the Caretakers, possibly the Factory. I don't expect that the Factory will go down, but the Caretakers are the real prize. If those go down, that's 30 build power, but it looks like that might not be happening, despite some pretty decent micro coming in from Wes, not able to ma manage themselves away from all these glaives quickly enough to get rid of the Caretakers. And not, I kind of wish they targeted the caretakers, honestly. Just target them one at a time, the glaives rip them apart, that would have been effective. It would have been a suicide run, yes. And I think that Wesley might have been trying to keep their glaives alive to do even more damage. But still, 30 build power would have been huge. And again, Filthas getting really nice positioning there, getting a nice surround on Wes's, Wes's glaives. They're not going to last. But at this point, Wes has so much more metal, has so much more build power, has the energy to make it work, and they are just spamming the glaives in here. They don't even care anymore. Field Toss has their own glaives, but just nowhere near the same numbers. Like Just by unit value, 4,000 metal unit value. And bear in mind, glaives are 60 each. So, 4,000 metal, that is 80 glaives extra. And Field Toss, realizing this, throws in the towel to Wes's slightly superior economic play, which honestly was, throughout the entire game, a little bit ahead. Just that little bit, all the time, but it built up. And that was really what it came down to. 
It is a very small but growing economic lead. So that was that. Next game is going to be between Philthas and Golda on Dual Icy Run. That'll be up in a couple of minutes, so stay tuned.